Associate Professor Chris Fediara of the Griffith University School of Medicine in the Gold Coast, Australia. I'm also the president and founder of the OCI Foundation, which is an NGO internationally registered across Nigeria and Australia. This is also the NGO that's uh, behind the AMAR Youth Health Campaign, otherwise known as the Aroy Health Campaign, which is a health initiative for Nigerian youths against breast and cervical cancers. We've been talking through a number of modules, and this is the very last of them, regarding the training of Nigerian teachers involved in senior secondary school education, particularly those in civic education. Now, this last module presents question, tells us on how to set questions on cervical cancers. So in the previous modules, we've looked at how to set questions on breast cancers. We've looked at how to teach, when to teach, and uh, who to teach. We also looked at what to teach. Now, after the teachings comes the exam, and uh, here we are looking at how to set questions on these exams. An outline of what we're gonna look at, question setting on cervical cancers. We have two slides to cover that, and then sample questions, and then trial quizzes. Now, these quizzes are designed for you to practice and to know exactly what we've talked about and make sure you've engaged with that. It's not designed to see how intelligent or how dull you are. So do not be scared to take it. And even if you fail it, we have measures is to make sure that you can redo them. And you need to do this before you're able to get the certificates. Now, follows the end slide. It's a brief one and hopefully you will enjoy it. Now, question setting on cervical cancers. The very first slide talks about things you must cover. Just like was the case in breast cancers, just like was the case in uh, what to teach. Questions on cervical cancers must cover very key things. There are six aspects of cervical cancers and every single one of them must be included in every exam. So be it a midterm test or end of year, you must have a question to cover every single one of these because we want it to be balanced. So this includes the general knowledge on the cancers, the risk factors, the symptoms, the screening and the pap smears and the vaccinations and the HPV and finally the preventive practices. So all this must be included in any question for any exam, even if it's a midterm test. And it's quite simple because we have measures, we have strategies that will make these questions not occupy a lot of space or take a lot of time. Um, each test or exam or quiz must be balanced. So what we mean by being balanced is that it must cover all six aspects for cervical cancers. Keep in mind, there were five aspects for breast cancers, but six for cervical cancers. And every single question in every single exam, be it a midterm test or end of year term or anything at all, must have questions from all this. And you can use your true or false questions and then have a few stems to cover to you know, a few options or stems, or you can use MCQ. All right, so we've had those designs. We're quite flexible, but the idea is to make sure that the students, when they're preparing for the exam, prepare for every single thing. Now, these balanced questions must be included in any exam test, any quiz, any midterm test, or any end of term exam. Now, I'm just repeating myself because I need to make sure this is well emphasized. Um, a question pool is provided by the OCI Foundation, and this pool can be adapted. You know, there's a section on this, but when you go through after this video, on the on the lesson text, there's a, a link that will take you to the, to the question pool online, where you can download them and print them if you like, but every school will have a copy, and every library will have a copy. So the teachers can use this to design the questions following the guides we've provided. Now, some of these sample questions are provided in a pool, like I said. Now, we insist and we strongly recommend that every school, every teacher should take our questions from this pool. Now, each pool, when you look at it, is divided. So you take your pool, you take your question from the pool uh, as needed. Um, if you click on the link in the main text, you'll see that pool. Um, it covers all five sections for breast and cervical, for breast cancer. Um, sorry, all six sections for cervical cancer. There's an error in that text. Um, and each participation school will receive a copy of the questions involved, like I said before. The questions are just guides, but you can modify it to suit what you want. Um, the formats can vary depending on the school. The formats can be true or false. It can be multiple choice. It can be open-ended. It can be to complete blanks, or it can be short essays. Now, the choice is yours as the teacher or as the school principal, as the guidance and counselor, or as the director of academics in the school. However, each question, each exam must cover questions from all. We recommend true or false because it's easy and because it's easy to, 
to include all the questions in one single main question and have all the options as, as stems. But you can use multiple choice, anything you like, but please, if the questions are not balanced, then the students will be missing out. And each school should adhere strictly to the pool of questions provided. It is especially designed to meet all the aims of the Armour Youth Health Campaign. So it is very important that you stick to that. We don't want you to go testing and seeing who is the most brilliant on Armour Youth. That's not our aim. Whoever comes tops does not really matter to us. But what matters to us is that the students know what we want them to know. And this is very, very important. And if you keep to within the pool and keep to the strategy of making sure that for breast cancer, you take questions from the five sections, while for cervical cancer, you take questions from the six sections, then you would have done a very good job of setting a balanced question. This is the end of the presentation and the end of this whole series. Thank you very much once again for listening. Again, we enjoin you all to join us as we armor our youths. We intend to do this while they're young, to do this for all of them, and to start doing this right now. We can do this for our families, we can do this for our states, and we can do this for our country. Thank you all very much.